This was the hardest thing that I've ever gone through in my whole life. So around two and a half years ago, I ended up making my YouTube channel. And the reason why I started a YouTube channel is because I loved making videos. I just wanted to make a living by doing what I enjoy. For the first year of YouTube, I was just making content because I wanted to make content. But at the time I was with my girlfriend, Bella. Through that whole first year, like it was great and everything. But then I ended up going overseas and the whole long distance thing was like really difficult for me and Bella. And like the relationship just wasn't the same when we came back. We ended up breaking up. I wouldn't say this to her at the time, because I really, I, I kind of like wanted to like play hard to get, you know what I mean? Because I really wanted to get back with her, but I ended up saying, yeah, no, nah, it's fine. That's all good. But on the inside, I was absolutely killing. Like I was like, I just want to like be with Bella and everything. It was just <laughs> because of this, my motivation went from creating and stuff, having fun with it to like, I want to impress Bella. I want to show her that I'm completely capable being by myself and I'm going to kill it without having a girlfriend, without having her around. I wanted to like prove that to her as well as like her family and everyone else kind of thing. It's kind of stupid, but when you're in love, like love really does blind you and you do things that you wouldn't usually do. Logic just goes out of the window. When I had her as like that motivator, it was like the strongest motivation I've ever had in my whole life. I was pretty much trying my best to do anything to try and get her attention and try and get her back. It's Oh, it's crazy to think about. I felt like I was on top of the world. At the same time, my heart was broken. So I was feeling crap, but I was also feeling like, nah, like let's do this. I'm single, I'm ready to, I'm ready to not necessarily mingle, but I was ready to just like kill it in my work life. I ended up just churning out content, like Monday through to Friday, I was uploading every single day. That motivation over like maybe like two months or three, three months or something like that, I was sort of noticing that that motivation was dying away. And like at the time I didn't know what was going on because I thought that for some reason that was like the normality, like feeling like on fire all the time when you're making videos and you should be like feeling great, having fun. I was freaking out because I was thinking like all of these crazy things like, oh no, like what if I've lost passion in my filmmaking and like my photography and stuff? Like I just don't feel like making videos. And because like I wasn't feeling like making videos, I thought that like, I didn't even like making videos anymore. Because I was focused on the work so much, I tied my identity up so much with making YouTube videos and filmmaking and photography that like, if I didn't like filmmaking and photography anymore, then like, who am I, you know? Like I had this whole identity crisis and this, was much more difficult than the breakup to go through. Like this was the hardest thing that I've ever gone through in my whole life. I was like, okay, you know what? I can either just like sit here and do nothing about it, or I can be proactive and try and figure out what's actually going on here. I ended up going to like a psychologist and she ended up like talking to me and stuff, which was good and everything. But being on YouTube is a very different thing to a lot of like what other people do. I didn't know any other YouTubers at the time. I felt like I couldn't really talk to anyone about this at the time and no one could really empathize with me because they didn't really know or understand what I was really going through. And this happened for like a good, like probably six, seven months. Like I was just feeling crap. I had no idea what I was doing in my life. And I thought that like everything, everything sort of felt like a bunch of like brick walls were just falling on me every single day. It felt like everything was going bad. But then I ended up finding like some self-help books. I remember specifically in reading the book, The Subtle Art of Not Giving, if one of the biggest things that I took away from it was like, it doesn't matter how you feel. Like if you're feeling good, that's cool. If you're feeling bad, that's also cool. If you think, that you should feel good or feel inspired or motivated all the time, then that's entitlement. You think that like the most successful people in the world or the greatest artists or whatever always have fun when they're doing their thing. Like, you know that saying where it's like, if you find something that you love, you'll never work a day in your life again. Like that saying is such bullshit. You know why that saying is so bad? It's because it raises your expectations so much. And so you won't be like settling for anything less. Even if you love something, there's going to be times where it's just, it just sucks. 
and then there's gonna be times where it's great. But the thing is, like, if you just lived for the great times, then like you wouldn't actually know what great is because what makes something feel really good or happy or like whatever is the contrast of like sad or bad or unhappy. You have to have the lows to appreciate the highs. And that's not just with like making and creating and everything like that, that's just with life. My mindset went from like, okay, I'm gonna make a video only when I feel good to, okay, I'm gonna make a video, I'm gonna do the thing regardless of how I feel, I don't care, I'm just gonna do it. From there, when I had that attitude shift, obviously it didn't happen overnight. It was this transition phase. So I would like fall back into old habits and I would complain every now and then, but then I would have to catch myself complaining and I'll be like, no, I'm not gonna complain, I'm just gonna push through this. And the more I did that, the more I practiced that, the better I got at it. And then over a few months, that mind shift change just became automatic. And because of that, I was having a lot more fun making content. This is fucked, man. This is like... This Dude, is let's just do something different. It's fine. It's okay. It's we can't shit. let it get us down. Dude, it's just a photo. I know. No. Who gives a fuck? No, no. It's just... Oh, that oh, would be sick. yes. Oh, look at this. What? Dude, yeah. dude, dude. Oh, yeah. Boom. Oh! All idea is being able to accept the negative, pursue the negative. So pretty much to sum it all up, after my breakup and everything, I assumed it was external circumstances that was going to determine my behavior as to what I was going to do. I was only gonna be able to get inspiration from things like looking at YouTube videos or just anything external, not internal. What I realized, especially after doing a lot of reading and stuff, this thing called the do cycle, and that's in this book called The Happiness Equation. You start off doing, then you realize you can do it, then you want to do it, and then you just do it again and you just like keep going. So if you're in a rut at the moment and you just like don't know what to do because you're feeling unmotivated or uninspired, then just do it anyway. The real key to this is not expecting to get inspiration from it. Like you just need to do it regardless of whether you like it or whether you don't like it or whether like you feel great after it or whether you don't. You just do it anyway. If it, was, if it wasn't that fun, cool. Then you move on to the next thing and you do that next thing again. If everything went to ex like your expectations of like, okay, like I'm gonna feel good if I do this, how boring would that be? Life is exciting because of the fact that we don't know. Nothing owes you anything. If you want something, you have to work hard to get it and you have to be willing to push through the obstacles no matter how you're feeling. The reason why I make videos is because I enjoy the process. I don't do it for views, subscribers, followers, likes, comments. I don't do it for money. I don't do it for girls. I don't do it for any of that stuff. It's just because I enjoy the struggle of making videos. Question of the day. So I just got my first ever camera and I was wondering what it was like when you got your first DSLR camera. When I got my first DSLR camera, I was like super excited. I was like, oh my God, like I can change lenses. I can like zoom in. I can like get that blurry background effect. You know, when you like, you just get like a new thing, you get like really excited. And obviously like that feeling just dies off as it goes. It's the same with anything. Anyways, that's the end of the video. If you like this video, maybe consider liking and subscribing it's up to you you know what to do it was awesome hanging out with you again and i'll catch you next time